the first thing that popped out at me was that we needed to do a U sub because I have this lonesome cosine T in the numerator and that cosine T dt could get absorbed if I just let U be sine T, not sine squared T, just sine T. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's let U be sine T and then du is cosine t dt, just like we wanted. Now, this is the important part. Make sure you switch your limits of integration because I'm going to rewrite the integral in terms of u, so the limits need to match. They need to be in terms of u also. Currently, these limits belong to the variable of the integral, so they belong to t. So I'm going to substitute them in for t right there with how I define my u sub. So u of 0, my lower limit, is sine of 0, which is 0. And then u of pi over 2, the upper limit, is sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So now let's rewrite our integral entirely in terms of u. So we'll go from 0 to 1. And then this is lovely right here. This cosine t dt, that's just du, beautiful, over square root. And then this is 1 plus u squared. How are we doing? Okay, good. Now from here, you look at it and you go, oh no, oh no, why wasn't this a minus? We'd be done. So instead, what we need to do now is use trig sub, right? If it was minus, then we would know it's sine inverse, bada bing, bada boom. But it's trig sub time. So which substitution is appropriate? When you have addition between your two terms, the variable quantity squared and the constant, we use tangent theta. So now it's substitution number two time. We're going to let u equal tangent theta.